So once we have these models in place, we do need to simulate them. Once the simulation is complete, we calculate the model's fitness levels, its scorecard in a way. We then run this scorecard against the current model niche environment to see how well it matches the niche. We could also alternatively start small instead and simulate local self-sustaining communities instead of whole society models. Simulating a community of say a thousand inhabitants with rudimentary concepts would be a trivial project for any computer science undergrad. By simulating communities, we could introduce nature's concepts such as genetic drift or parameter drift between nearby communities. Each community could dictate its own model niche environment to create personalized and localized social model. Parameter drift would ensure that concepts that are common between communities would drift along the model community population to unite humanity's goals and direction. I encourage everyone to check out an explained example of this implementation online at zemerge.com. We could even do something else like treat modules or black boxes of sub-models of society's inner workings to make a model zoo environment where each model resides and coexists with other models in a virtual ecosystem created by the feedback mechanisms described previously. I'm sure there could be many different alternations of this idea and I'm excited to see what is created. The point is that we could really get creative and technical by simply looking at nature's algorithms and how they deal with living ecosystems. Another great reason to simulate. Currently we are using world's fastest supercomputers to do things as weather simulations, simulations of nuclear detonations, but wouldn't it be more wise to simulate the spectrum of social phenomena instead to help solve the problems that we got ourselves into? Another important requirement of these simulations is they need to be emergent in structure. In other words, simple social parameters will give rise to complex social interactions. There should be no underlying assumptions or rules that social models need to obey. A bottom-up approach with low-level constructs will ensure that any conceivable social model will be able to emerge from an infinite spectrum of social parameters that are provided. So, given that any social model is able to transform to any other social model with a series of parameter recombinations and mutations, anything is possible. And I mean anything. But realistically, what would likely to emerge? Well, just look at nature. Diversity, holistic, abundance, creativity, equality. No one really decides which organisms succeed or perish. Functionality, sustainability, and relevance to the natural world would be at the forefront. The Venus Project, based on a resource-based economy, is a good example of something that would rank high. Our egocentric, disconnected view of our existence, the wasteful competing environment we created for ourselves, emotional decision making at the expense of others, the self-preserving institutions we have created that are not only parasitic to the human condition but are also enemies of change and sustainability, the endless corruption and greed our society perpetuates and passes on from generation to generation. The artificial scarcity our monetary system creates. We have enough food to feed all the people on the planet. We just don't have the right framework to make it happen. The materialistic confusion one identifies themselves with the perpetual consumerism that our culture worships. The immature and childish, unjust and cruel stratification of large groups of population thrown into a life cycle of modern servitude that resembles blind slavery. If you have any empathy for your children and future generations, please let this insanity stop. Things have to change. Never in human history have there been such a great turning point approaching that could impact not only every future human generation to come, but the ability for a species to persist. In the end, our inability to change and adapt will result in a continuing shrinkage of the human ecological niche, as well as the destruction of the Earth's natural ecosystem, which will likely end in a catastrophe mass extinction, which could include ourselves. With leveraging the ideas how life develops and matures, we can steer our own destiny and discover our own potentials in a wonderful universe we exist. But if we are the only intelligent life in a universe, then we can place the title to our existence as the consciousness of this universe. And now more than ever, the future of this exquisite natural phenomena is placed in the hands and minds of the current and upcoming generations. The question is, are we up for this challenge?
Our society is becoming too complex. Too many hidden layers of complexity are placed on top of each other, and our current solutions to problems include placing new layers of complexity on top of existing complexity, without really understanding how the new complexity will affect the system as a whole. A time comes when adding any new complexity only makes the problem worse off. Hence, a need arises to restructure this complexity from the ground up with full transparency into the inner workings through systematic computer modeling. The sad thing is that most of us spend large chunks of our lives supporting one of these layers of complexity that serve no real benefit or, or improvement for mankind. We all serve to keep the layer of intertwined complexity in place because that is the way it is and we never imagined any better. Think of bankers, stock traders, advertisers, lawyers, accountants, insurance brokers, financial analysts, politicians, and so forth. What if instead of perpetuating these layers of useless complexity, we put our heads together and work on solutions? Solutions of animation, solutions of simplification, solutions that give results and not waste their time. As Peter Joseph of the Zeitgeist Movement mentions, what if all these people worked on the next version of the Manhattan Project, but instead of creating weapons of mass destruction, we created weapons of mass creation. As far as I know, we live one life. We have one shot at it. So let's make it all the best for ourselves and our descendants. So once again, what is the main difference with the Zemerge model and any other social models out there? The difference is that it is the scaffold of the framework to create any model. It is truly dynamic to bring about social change as it is needed. No longer will the few make decisions that impact the masses. Instead, the masses will make collective decisions that influence the holistic emerging social direction that affect their own lives. Future generations will never complain about how the social system is faulty and needs to be changed, since the continuous feedback of changing and exploration of possibilities will be built into the system. And we have to remember that this emerge method is just another tool to help us make better decisions. Nothing more or nothing less. In the end, it will be up to us if we want to implement these decisions. As humble and just everyone can be, no individual can be fully subjective due to our natural inclinations and limitations. Making purely rational decisions is clouded by our opinions, beliefs, status quo, personal agendas and emotions. Thus, it is imperative that we use a systems approach to managing our society. What is currently being done out there with regard to social simulations? Well, there are multiple academic groups that deal with social simulations, but with membership fees, inner circle academic groups, monetary pressure, and so forth, I don't really see much coming out of them. I believe these ideas need to be easily understandable and pursued by the masses for any social overhaul transformation. And again, since there is no monetary gain or profit from implementing such a system, it's hard to do anything like this and get it off the ground, so it will be challenge. As Peter Joseph of the Zeitgeist Movement states that no one really invents anything from scratch. Knowledge is serial and we all contribute little pieces by mixing, borrowing, recombining previous ideas to spawn new ones. So hence, these ideas are not new. Now it's time to crank up the human thought engine and take these ideas to the next level. The goal of the Zemerge project at the moment is to promote the concept to the general public as well as to inspire future generations to pursue this field of study. I'm also currently positioning the project with the goals and aims of the Zeitgeist movement to be the planetary AI system Peter Joseph speaks of. It's the common idea that we all share to change the world from the ground up and introduce a transformation in human civilization for generations to come. I am excited for future generations of humanity. We have no idea what we are capable of in terms of creation and creativity. I welcome you all to visit Zemerge.com to learn further information on this project and subscribe to the newsletter. This is an intellectual call to arms to all scientists, rationalists, creative thinkers, and innovators. If you are interested in contributing in any way, I encourage anyone to take this idea and ponder it, build upon it, and spread awareness. I also encourage anyone to find out more information about the Zeitgeist Movement as it is currently the largest grassroots social change movement out there connecting individuals to share ideas and prospects. In unity, we will slowly change the world. To finish a quote from Charles Darwin, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the most responsive to change. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for further developments.